friends. Welcome to this episode of the Cutting Room Floor podcast of Grace Church, where we talk about uh, last week's sermon and what didn't make it in or what we want to talk a little more about. Uh, my name is Larry. I'm one of your pastors. I'm joined by another one of our pastors, Taylor, today, who was hey. first writer at the Cape Campus uh, yeah. this week. And uh, so we kicked off a new series, uh, but more importantly, our kids are back to school. They're back to school. And yeah. one of us is dealing with that better than the other. Yeah, I'm, I'm better today. Um, yesterday was Jim's first day of kindergarten, and so that was just, it was hard. Um, I had a, I joked with teaching team, I had a good cry on the way. I dropped off Tatum here first, and then I went to the elementary school to drop Gemma off. Had a good cry in between that, um, just of, you know, how did the time go so quick? I know. And it, it doesn't slow down. Oh I mean, I'm only a couple years ahead of you, but yeah. Thing, but it, the difference between kindergarten and uh, Marky being in fourth grade and Taylor being in third, I like pushed them out of the moving vehicle. Like, go to school. I got to go. I got to go. Bye. Well, and you even, didn't you say like Marky was up at 5 a.m. ready to go? Yeah, like 5.15, uniform <laughs> on, in our room, hairbrush. She's ha. like, Daddy, it's the first day of school. I said, not for another two hours. It's not. Yep. Like, <laughs> nope. Nope. I will acknowledge that in an hour and a half when yeah. I'm awake. Yeah, that was <laughs> was that was something she is uh she loves school and in the routine yeah. of of school so she was super excited uh, I love it. Sayla was excited too but not to that level not 5 a.m like, excited no Sayla was like okay I'm gonna have my Cheerios now and <laughs> we'll get ready to go to school so uh it's uh but we're we're kicked off into a new school year and, yeah uh, we talked about it on Sunday like how yeah. important it is to get those first few days off to a good start yeah. and have all of the essentials together yes um, I, I don't know about the school that, uh, that Jim was going to, but the lists are so detailed. Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like the specific type of Crayola products yeah, and the yeah. specific type of scissors. And, you must have oh, yeah. three packages of this specific brand of pencil. Like, don't you dare buy any other yes. brand of pencil. And the color of the pencil. Did, like, like, it wasn't... Like, it was yellow pencils. Right. Did you have that, too? Right. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. specifically and yellow. Pink erasers. And yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's something. It's so, wild. I, and with, with Brittany starting uh, work at Small Wonders this year, I, I did a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And so I've never had to do the list before, and I was like, this is chaos. Yes. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. Elisa still does the list in our house. It's the teacher in her, yeah. I think. And she, like, will – she will literally have Walmart, Target, Amazon – it, like all these Office Depot staples, all these websites right. open, and she will look for like who has the best deal by ten cents yep. on the I, pencils. I ordered from three different yeah. places. Uh, yeah, for that it was it was ridiculous, and then it's all coming in different shipments or oh, this yeah. part to pick up yes. order. I'm like, okay, uh, I guess we got to have it all. Yes, and, I almost left like water for our Amazon guy. Because he like he's so been he's, there a lot. So he's not only is he delivering like our kids' school supplies, but then Elisa's and maybe you right. had this too. Like yep. like the classroom wish list supplies yes. for the teacher. Like for Brittany, probably had yes. this too. So like we're just getting bombarded with Amazon packages yeah. that I don't know who what belongs to anyone. Yeah. And, Brittany yeah. put that list out there, and we came home from the beach one day and could not open the front door because <laughs> there were so many. I'm like, this is ridiculous, but it was also like great. It's like, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, it's great. The folks were supporting. It's great supporting that. So. um so we, we talked about that Sunday, like how important those essentials are for yeah. back to school. Then use that as a segue that there's some essentials to our faith. Yeah, too. yeah. And it's it's really easy to um, to kind of push those to the side and right. just kind of go through the motions of it. So right. this series, uh, Essentials, is about kind of that what's essential and a back to the basics kind of yes, thing. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I don't want people to overhear us either and to think like – you know, the five weeks of this, these five essentials are the only essentials right. to like, 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 don't overhear us either. Like, like there's a lot of essentials to this, but we're covering five of them. If that makes right. sense. I love it. Like it's yeah. back to school, back to basics kind of thing. And, and this time of the year, whether you've got a kid in school or not, it's so, it's such a t- great time of the year to start, right. to start a new rhythm, to start a new thing. Mm-hmm. We, we kind of see that kind of in mm-hmm. our, our world as a whole. And so we felt really appropriate to do something like this is kind of this back to basics. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about faith. Yeah. Let's talk about love. Yeah. Let's talk about blessing and calling Mm -hmm. and hope and some of some of these foundational things. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're doing that through the new Testament Mm -hmm. letter, first Thessalonians that, that Paul wrote to Christians in Thessalonica. And I think one of the things that we hope to bring out in this series is there's a lot of parallels between what was happening yeah. in their culture, what's happening in our culture with, yeah. you know, the, the melting pot and all these cultural collisions yeah. and political forces and things like that. Like, 
they're not so different from no. us. And what, for me, that's a comforting thought. Like yeah. when I think about like, like we've been through a lot in the Absolutely. last few years as a culture, but I can look back to something like this and go, we're not unique in this. No. Like there's nothing new under the sun. The people right. of God have been through this and worse. Right. Exactly. B- before. Um, exactly. The, would you give us some of the, the, the background of Thessalonians? I know we tried to just kind of toe into yeah, it a little bit because yeah. we don't want to give it all away, but. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to give a little more. We talked about this as a teaching team. One thing that was kind of unique to this series is we're going to give a like, kind of a little context about Thessalonica each week. Mm-hmm. Um, because if we try to give it all in one sermon, it would be the 30-minute sermon. Right. Like, it would just be the whole context yeah. of Thessalonica, let's pray. And we can do that. We can geek out we on could. that. We could, yeah. But we could. Nobody's going to come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so the the relevancy to today's world is what stands out the most. Mm-hmm. So there were a few key factors with Thessalonica in, in, the, in the kind of the context of the city. The first is that it was a large, affluent city that had people from a lot of different backgrounds, mm-hmm. a lot of different beliefs. I'm not going to go too deep into that because I know Pastor Wes actually this week is kind of going into some we of the won't specifics. Steal your thunder, Wes. Yeah, yeah, he'd be so bad if I just rattled all this off. So <laughs> we love you, Wes. So, so, so he's going to get into some of the specifics of that. But, but just, just needless to say, there was a lot of different contexts and a lot of different beliefs, mm-hmm. a lot of different traditions too. So there were some, you know, religious traditions, some mm-hmm. cultural traditions, some pagan traditions, mm-hmm. all kind of mixed into this melting pot of the city, mm-hmm. which left obviously people with some questions yeah. about what what really is the the true or the right path right. to follow. What do I believe here? What do we believe about this? For, for mm-hmm. example, we're going to see in in a couple weeks in this series, there was a lot of kind of question about. Jesus coming back, yeah. and like, what does that look like, and, and who exactly mm-hmm. is he, and what does that mean? Mm-hmm. That was a lot of kind of the source of some of their questions yeah. and what that what that meant. And the similarities to that versus today are, are pretty pretty profound. Like the first thing to keep in mind is there were all of these competing traditions mm-hmm. that were competing with one another for people to like put their faith in or put their trust right. in to, to follow. Much like today, yeah. I mean, even you know, even if we go even within Christianity, right? There's we talk no about shortage. Right. All the different kind of splinters within yeah. there, and then if we zoomed out even beyond Christianity, all mm-hmm. the different um, world religions you could follow, mm-hmm. or or even being more agnostic or atheist mm-hmm. or, or or whatever the and case may be. All the degrees be. in between, right? Bingo, yeah. yeah, yeah, and all the degrees in between those. Um, there is a wide array of kind of competing. Mm-hmm. Not just religious, I would dare say, like even cultural values oh, yeah, and, and, and 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 some ethos that we yeah. hold that compete for our allegiance, yeah. our attention. Mm-hmm. Um, there were people then, as we saw with the story. I'm going to get to that in a second. Like like the setup there in Acts 17 of people competing to like kind of tear down the church, tear down the right. reputation of Paul and other Christ followers, and tear down the reputation of Jesus. Well, we see that today too. Mm-hmm. We see that in full force of people kind of questioning who Jesus really is, and tearing him down, and tearing the church down. And then there's the infighting. I mean, yeah, bingo, yeah. All, yeah, all of it. The, it's all it's there. Not just people, it's not just outsiders tearing the church down, it's the church tearing the church down. Yeah, yeah. We kind of eat our own sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> and then you have this, this real, and you can't ignore it, I know it'd be easier sometimes to not talk politics from now until December, mm-hmm. but like in this case, like it's in the text. Like we yeah. talked about, it. you can't it's ignore there. it. You know th- the reason for the initial uprising. So so you had to have all that stuff in the background. Right. But then what kind of came to the surface? What really made everything bubble over was when Paul and his team were pledging allegiance to Jesus as King mm-hmm. and not Caesar as King. Whoa. And that caused the the true uprising where they they go and you know they go in the home and take Jason out and yep. like it's it's this whole thing where they're trying to like find Paul mm-hmm. and they're charging treason charging him with treason and 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 this is a very 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 I think relevant thing to mm-hmm. now of of uh, and I'm not I'm not talking at one side I'm talking at all sides of right. this of like in political seasons we can get in kind of a, a hive mindset to right. go. It's all about my candidate. It's all about my candidate. Right. And I just want to caution us to realize that this is what happened back then. Yeah. It was very much this problem with, well, no, no, 
Caesar has to be king, not Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's one or the other. The two ideas can't coexist. Exactly, it, it, exactly. So it, it is a politically charged statement to say Jesus is Lord, because if Jesus is Lord, exactly. Caesar is not. Exactly, exactly. It takes that, power that's away. Tr- right. Yes. That's where they got in trouble. Yes, yeah. And so it, it was a source of tension there, mm-hmm. and, and it's a source of tension today in our Absolutely. world. I mean, just look at the divisiveness with politics. Yep. We're not going to talk about politics ad nauseum, but, but we just need to name it. If that was a factor then mm-hmm. that caused this kind of riot to happen. Mm-hmm. And that was really what bubbled over and caused Paul and, and team to leave. Yeah. Now, here's what's great about this, though, because we can easily go like, okay, sweet. So things stunk things then really and bad. they stink yeah, now. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah, and so here's what's the best part. It's knowing all of that context about the city, about mm-hmm. its relationship with the church, about the relationship with the spread of the gospel, and understanding how the power of God still won. Yeah, come on. About how the good news still spread. Yeah. That's the why we talk about the context here, because yeah. we understand how much how much of a struggle the world was, and how tough things were, and how hard it was for the church. But look at what still happened with the gospel; it still mm-hmm. spread. It spelled like spread like wildfire. Like more and more people were coming to faith and coming to follow the way of Jesus, right. even in the face of that. So this, that's the good news. This isn't a letter where where Paul's going, okay, things were really bad, and I know they're bad, but like he's saying things got bad. But you guys are so good. Yes. Like he, yes. he's doling out these compliments of yes. how, how you've stood firm. Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, in this this first passage we looked at in First Thessalonians one, uh, he's really praising their faith, and he that's is. that's the uh, the essential that that we talked about uh, this week. And one of the things uh, you you talked about, and I talked about at Central, and I'm sure Pastor Sherry did mm-hmm. out at Shores, was this this difference between a worldly idea of faith. Mm-hmm. And a biblical concept, because he's praising a biblical concept yes. of faith. Yeah. Flesh that out for us. Yeah, so so we talked about, you know, there's a difference between what the world's definition of faith is and what, what God's definition of faith is. Mm-hmm. I would say the world's definition of faith is putting trust in what you can see and mm-hmm. can know. Mm-hmm. Meaning, like, you gain enough info, you gain enough evidence mm-hmm. to then go, okay, this seems trustworthy. This seems like I can place right. my faith in it. God's definition is not that. God's definition is even in the unseen, even in the unknown, Mm -hmm. we place our faith in something greater. Mm -hmm. It's not just what we know, it's what we cannot see. In this case, it's the power and presence of God that we place Mm -hmm. our faith in. And so there there is this distinction here, I think, of, of, and we live in a world of, I joked about it at at, at the Cape, at least, about Google searches and AI. Mm -hmm. Like, we are starved for information, because we can get information in an instant, from yeah. technology. Yeah, like that. I mean, literally, the snap of a finger, we can have it. And so it's kind of impacted the way we place our faith in things. Like, we have to know a ton of info about something before we even go. Like, think about – I was talking with Elisa about this. Like, think about when you go to a new restaurant. Mm-hmm. You used to just go to the restaurant. Right. Oh, this is good. Yeah. You used this to just perfect. You used to just go, mm-hmm. right? Like, someone would say, hey, you got to check out so-and-so. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay, let me – we'll go there on Friday night. And you would drive there, and you'd show up, and you'd go. Now – yeah, I don't trust just what they're telling me. No. Oh. Now, but you, when someone suggests a restaurant, you have gone on the website. If it's a franchise, you've gone on the main website. Mm-hmm. You've looked up the menu. Mm-hmm. You've looked up pictures on Google Maps or Yelp. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you like you've read reviews. Read reviews. On Yelp. Yep. Yes, I mean, like, like you have you have delved into it yeah. deeply. To just be able to go, okay, I'll try the chicken yeah, the, parm there. By the time I walk in the door, I have a fully formed opinion on what my experience is right. going to be and what I'm going to order. Right, yeah. right. And and that's just to have dinner somewhere. Right. Oh, and that's so, so good. And so this this has this has shaped the way we view faith and what we put our trust in. Mm-hmm. And, and hear me, I'm not saying, like, you know, throw your iPhone in the river and, like, don't look right. up anything and don't value info and knowledge. I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. What I am saying, though, is to keep in mind that when God calls us to faith, Mm-hmm. It's not a faith that we always know the answer and always mm-hmm. know what's going to come. It's a faith that there is uncertainty, yeah. there is unknown, yeah. but we we trust in the power and presence of God beyond that. Yeah, and I, I think there are. I'm a very logical person. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not given to 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 emotionalism or, or blind trust in something. Yeah. So that's been a hard concept of faith for me. Yeah. Um, 
But as I've gone deeper in like finding those proofs and those things that I can tangibly, yes. it helps me to trust in the things I can't see. Absolutely. Because as I've gone on these quests, I'm like, oh, well, this is true. The Bible's true because of this. Or Absolutely. archaeologically, we see this. And I'm like, now I can trust. You yes. know. So it, it's a both and. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, but and our world just does one side of that. Absolutely. It's all about certainty. Right. And and I didn't I didn't get, I didn't have time to preach this in the sermon, but like this is this is something I've been sitting on for a while. Mm-hmm. This this next idea I'm gonna say. We are in a world that searches for certainty, mm-hmm. but we live by the following of a Savior and a God that talked about faith. Yeah. And faith and certainty cannot coexist. Yeah, I think... So, so like, like, like w- if we want absolute certainty about everything... That becomes your Caesar. That becomes Caesar. <laughs> yeah. And there's no room then for faith because mm-hmm. there's nothing unknown or nothing unseen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, like if, if we are just about like, well, I can't put my faith in something until I'm certain. Yeah. No, no, no. You're, you're chasing after two different things. Yeah. Like faith is trust in the face of uncertainty. Yeah. And certainty is trust in only what is known. Right. And so when we, when we, when we hedge our bet and kind of go, well, well, I, I'm not going to put my faith in something until I'm a little more certain right. about it. We just might never get right. there because we're looking, we're literally chasing after two fundamentally different Different yeah. def- defined things there. I had a mentor of mine not too long ago say that certainty is its own form of idolatry. Absolutely. And, and it was just Absolutely. this boom moment for me. Absolutely. Uh, like, they are mutually exclusive yes. of one another. Yes. Like, like I'm certain of my faith in Jesus. Bingo. Because it Bingo. works together. In Bingo. That. Bingo. But if I need full certainty that I can see it, yes. taste it, touch it. Yes. We're not and, talking about faith anymore. Yes. And, and I'm not talking about confidence. Right. Let's not confuse that. Yeah. Because even look at Hebrews, even look at the verse mm-hmm. in Hebrews I shared. Yeah. Of, of, we're not talking about the absence of confidence. I think some people go, well, I have to be certain in my faith. No, yeah. no, we're substituting the word confident there. Yeah. Like we're confident in our faith. Mm-hmm. We're certain of our faith. We are certain mm-hmm. of that, but yet we are not absolutely certain, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Because there are things of God that our human yeah. finite minds yeah. cannot my ways be certain are not your of. Ways. Yeah, like like it would be it would be frightening. I say this all the time. It'd be frightening if my human finite mind with limits understood mm. all that God can understand. Yeah. That'd be a bad that'd be yeah. bad news for me because that means that like is my God not big en- like like yeah. I it would be like is my God not big enough yeah. cuz I'm understanding everything about him yeah. in, in in my mind. So for me there's a great there's a great news in like yeah there's some mystery here. Yeah. God is so powerful, so mighty, mm-hmm. so omnipotent, so omnipresent. That there are things I'm not going to. There are things my human yeah. finite mind just can't comprehend. And I, I think that that becomes something that takes faith deeper, right? Yes. Like, like it's yeah. something I can hold on to when I can't see what's exactly. happening. I don't understand what's happening to me right now. I don't exactly. understand why I'm in this season, but I know that God can do something in it. Exactly. Exactly. And, I and, agree. and whatever I've walked through, God can can use that to yeah. to make me more like Jesus. Can use it for His glory. Yeah. Uh, and, and that becomes a deeper piece of faith. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It deepens. When we take that principle, it deepens us in our faith when, when life is hard. Yeah. If we take that it's principle. It's something to hold. Yes, absolutely. By, it's something to hang by, on to. Like, like, like I am certain that, that God worked in my past in these right. situations. So I don't know exactly what's happening right now. But I'm still going to trust that he knows what he's doing. Exactly. Yeah, like exactly. That's, 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 that, exactly. That's it. It, 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 it reframes the whole thing. That's it. Of like, of like, I'm certain that in my life, God showed up in all of these moments. Right. So and so I'm going to have the faith yeah. that he'll do it again. Right. It's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's what Paul's praising them yeah. for. Like, yeah. like there's been so much adversity has come your way and people that have stood against this, uh, like... Uh, what we say, scholars say they were there any like Anywhere maybe from three weeks to three months, depending which on which is you not a at. not a long time to be no. discipled in the faith. No, no. If you if you look if you look at that, if you think about the max that a scholar would agree that they were there is ninety days. Yeah, that's that's no time. That's yeah. nothing. That's, nothing. No, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah. It took me ninety days to unpack the boxes in my office. <laughs> like I still, I yeah, still back. Yeah, yeah, and like so. <laughs> So like in that time, they they developed enough of the faith and this yeah. this trust in Jesus that when all these outside and cultural uh, forces start coming at them, mm-hmm. they're like, "This is where we're at. Right. Jesus is Lord. Yes, Caesar is not. Come what yes. may. Yes, that's why that's why Paul's like doling out the feel goods to absolutely. Him. And what, notice what Paul does in there, and, and we'll see this throughout the letter. Paul doesn't predict the future. Mm-hmm. Paul tells them. You're certain. You're, you are certain in your belief. You're certain in your faith. You're certain in mm-hmm. in Jesus is Lord. 
Jesus is king. He talks about like the trouble that's going to come. Mm-hmm. And he prays that they would stand firm, that their hearts would be strong and encourage them to do so. What Paul doesn't sit there and do is to go, well, here's exactly what's going to happen mm-hmm. to you. You're going right. to have one, two, three. He doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. What he talks about, what he's most certain in is the work that God is doing in and through them. Mm-hmm. That's what he's most certain in. Yeah. And he talks about how that work and the evidence of God's power and presence there is going to fuel them and keep them going, keep them persistent yeah. and effective and living set apart mm-hmm. for the weeks, months, years mm-hmm. to come. Yeah, so this this faith be- piece becomes the essential that kind of launches everything Absolutely. else. That, that's, Absolutely, that's to come. Like they're getting this part right. Yeah, and, and so many of Paul's letters are like, "Hey, this is what you're doing well. This is where I'm going to take my flip flop off and hit you with it." Hit you over the yeah. head. Yeah, you know, and um, like, you can just you you get a sense of Paul's deep affection. Absolutely, for these people. Absolutely, like like this is his poster child for yes. church planting. Yes, yeah, yes, and we're going to see over the next couple of weeks like the relationship he has with them, and also the. He doesn't really ha- like. He's got a little bit of a flip flop moment. Yeah, but it's not as much as other letters. Not oh my gosh. You know, his letter to the Corinthians is very much like, "Hey, yeah, it's Paul. Paul here. Yeah, you're all divided. Yeah. We got to figure this out. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start writing. Yeah, and it, this is not the tone there. In fact, he, right. he he expects them to be a mess. Yeah, he writes and goes, "I I I I, I expected the enemy, the tempter, yeah. no, to kind of to kind of snuff out I the was flame. Worried about you. Yes. Yeah." yeah. But so, that's that's not what Timothy reported back to me. No, no, so, no. So wow, let yeah. me, you know. And what a beautiful, once again, what a beautiful testimony of God's power and God's grace to be able to still move in the face of adversity. Yeah. So we we talked about three things that that highlighted their their faith uh, in this being their effectiveness, their persistence, and their distinctiveness. Yeah. Uh, that and I mean that's that's right out of the text. I mean yep. that's that's not that's not yep. crafty preacher speak. It's no. Right no. there. So th- they were just so incredibly effective at, at, at yeah. sharing the gospel in the midst of all of these, you know, cultural things. Like Paul's saying, I'm hearing about this well beyond your region. Yeah. Like this isn't just like the Macedonian region of, of Greece. Yeah. Like I'm hearing all the way that people are hearing what you guys are doing. Yeah. W- what's that look like for the church today? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's, I, I, I would say an effective ministry and I think we at Grace Church, we try to really embody what I'm about to say. I think the, ch- the church today gets really consumed with, like, how many people show up on a mm-hmm. Sunday. And that's not exactly what Paul is talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, Paul points to an effective ministry as far as, like, how many people have had a change of direction mm-hmm. in their life. Mm-hmm. Meaning... These were people that were following an idol or something else, mm-hmm. and they have turned from it and turned toward following mm-hmm. the way of Jesus. Yeah. For me, that's the effective ministry. And that's one of the things we talk about, like on Vision Sunday, we talk about more yes. and maturing. Yes. And when we talk about Reach, Connect, Form, Sin, like yes. what's your next step yes. toward Jesus? Like numbers ain't everything, but they're not nothing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Every, 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 number, every but, number represents a person. But the... The, the the ministry that I was model that I was trained in, like watching the numbers of butts in the pews yeah. and how many baptisms we had or professions yeah. of faith, that was my drug of choice. Right. Like Absolutely. I, I, that's what I was basing my worth on Absolutely. As, as, as a leader. And, and now in these these past years, God is showing me that there's there's such a different piece to that effectiveness and how are people becoming more like Jesus? Absolutely. Like so after church on Sunday we had our family ministry volunteer kickoff. Um, so I went from you know preaching, mm-hmm. I went up there, um, we ate lunch together and we started with glory sightings. And there were five that were shared. One of them was about how we have youth leaders that are now in college, that are youth counselors, college students mm-hmm. that are youth counselors, that started at Small Wonders, went all the way through children, youth ministry, mm-hmm. now in young adult ministry, and they're serving middle schoolers. Mm-hmm. Another one was Stacy had shared that the, the six of the, gradu- of the fifth grade graduates that she promoted this weekend mm-hmm. started in Small Wonders as infants. Wow. And they kind of went the whole way. Mm-hmm. We had another glory sighting about how a middle school boys, a middle school boys small group, now, no, I, no, right there, I, I can't even wrap my mind. That is still, they're still no alive. Middle school boys, small group. Okay, go that, on. That at the end of the group, it is now the culture where each one of them will go around and pray out loud. Hmm. Which a lot of us listening to this podcast don't like to pray out loud. And you got yeah. middle school boys in a room that were praying out loud. Wow. Um, a, another, another person shared about EE, e, e, about all the amazing ministry here. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and, and the connections that are being made. And then someone else shared about a family that they is new to town. They got connected with mm-hmm. and, and how that much that dinner meant to them and the family they met with. Mm-hmm. All of those are evidence of people taking their mm-hmm. next step in faith. Yeah. I, and we could have talked about baptism. We've had some mm-hmm. baptisms here at the Cave over the last few weekends. Mm-hmm. Like we, I could talk about all that. But it's that's the stuff that effective ministry yeah. is. It's not just celebrating. None of none of those, which I love this, none of those were about, we had a record high number of right. people at whatever. Does that something we celebrate? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Numbers matter. But it was, it's not like we were just given all number glory signings. Those were yeah. all moments where people took the next step in their faith. Yeah. And those are things we celebrate. To me, that's the effective ministry mm-hmm. because those are all evidence of God's transforming power at work in people as they take their next step mm-hmm. to follow him. It's not just about the like, Paul didn't say, hey guys, you've gotten X amount of people you know, you know, joining now. Paul, Paul's like, I'm hearing about the f- people turning and turning mm-hmm. from idols, turning toward Christ. But he also talks about like, like I'm hearing about the hospitality yeah. you all are showing. And I'm hearing about the faith you have. And I'm hearing about, you know, mm-hmm. it's more than just the number. It's about what is the output? What are we seeing? And what, what they're seeing mm-hmm. is people taking the next step. And that's what effective ministry is for us, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the next piece of that was was their persistence, like in the face yeah. of adversity, in the face of persecution, of all these outside influences, yeah. how how they chose to to cling to uh, to their faith. Um, and, and I think an example of that for me outside of the the Western Church uh, has been some contacts that I have in in the Middle East. Like we mm-hmm. see what's on the news with yeah. you know you know and all the fighting sure. and, and political division about that. But what I'm hearing is just people who live on the ground who are trying to follow Jesus, mm-hmm. who might find themselves on the Israeli side of the border or might be on the Palestinian side, holding together. Yeah. Like we're, our citizenship may be on different sides and we have different political views, but we're going to make sure that you're fed. Yeah. You know, that's persistence. You know, yeah. like even yeah. in the face of all this, we're going to keep being the church. Yeah. And as I hear those stories back from my friends there, like that's the stuff that I'm like, that's... That's, that's what it. the church needs. That's it. So much. That's the, that's a picture of persistence for me. Yeah, and doesn't it? You know, hearing that, I'm you know, I'm having having my own conviction moments mm-hmm. now of like, what are the things I've complained about in the 48 hours that have been hard mm-hmm. for me when it comes to faith? Mm-hmm. You know, watching mm-hmm. watching my country get torn apart by rockets, mm-hmm. holding unity with somebody on the other side mm-hmm. based on my faith in Jesus yep. and making sure we're staying alive and getting fed. Yeah. Yeah. We can, That's we, a picture of persistence. We, we can go back to arguing the politics of this later. Absolutely. Let's just be the church. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. That, yeah. That's, that's just, yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. And it is, it is, it is a beautiful marker of persistence. Yeah. And I think that's the stuff that glimpse is closer to the persistence in Thessalonica back then that Paul's mm-hmm. writing about versus Maybe the, what the American church mm-hmm. would say is, yeah, I, is, is just I think trouble. we need a big dose of that. Yes, like w- when I hear from my friend Saeed, who lives in in Bet Sahur, which is yeah. Palestinian, or I hear from my 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 friend Mick, who lives on the Israeli side, and uh, they're taking care of each other, yeah, and finding ways to 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 make that work. I'm like, that's that's the gospel. Yes, and, and it and it brings it to a human level yeah. at that point. We're, we're yeah. not we're not we're not on to. It, 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 it keeps it our main identity. We're yeah. not into secondary identities where it's are mm-hmm. you Israeli or Palestinian mm-hmm. or what's your what's your party allegiance? All that. Yeah. It's it, uh, that's, those are all the secondary identities. Yeah. Our, our 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 main identity is 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 humans created in the image of God. Yeah. Like that's the, that's the primary. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Those, those that, that's that's persistence. Yes. That, that I think we need a big dose of absolutely. Uh, in the same way that we need a big dose of distinctiveness. Yeah, like, yeah. So so what's that look like? Explain distinctiveness. Kind of what it looked like for the Thessalonians and yeah. what it could look like for us. Yeah. So you know that word that that idea of distinctiveness. Kind of you, you might you might be like okay I, I read First Thessalonians. We're gonna talk about the homework in a second. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they've done it. Um, so. You might be like, but I didn't see the word distinctiveness. So, mm-hmm. so he, here are some phrases that distinctiveness means. It means holy, mm-hmm. set apart, mm-hmm. unlike the world, unlike mm-hmm. the culture, living as Christ would. I mean, it's, it's those kind of phrases, those kinds mm-hmm. of ideas. Where being distinct means you don't live as someone who blends in with the world. You blend. You, you, you live as someone who's set apart from the world. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're called as followers of Jesus. We're called to live as distinct, holy, set apart mm-hmm. people, which means that the way we live looks different than the what the world might agree with. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think, I, I think that that doesn't just come through like holding a bullhorn and screaming about Jesus. Mm-hmm. 
what that means is I think there's a there's a different kind of love that we show. There's a mm-hmm. different kind of patience that we show. There's a different kind of grace that we mm-hmm. show. There's a different kind of humility mm-hmm. that we show. It doesn't mean we back away from the truth of who God is and Absolutely. what Jesus did and yeah. what Jesus can do for you. But it also means that that we're going to live a little differently. Yeah. And our, our measure of love is different than the world. Our measure of faith is different than the world. Mm-hmm. Our measure of humility is different than the world. Mm-hmm. Our, our, our definition of success is different than the yeah. world's. It's all those pieces of like, what, 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 the way Jesus lived was so countercultural mm-hmm. that when we live that in today's world, t- heads turn. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where some of the mocking and some of the, you know, are you kidding me? You're going to... You know, you're gonna believe this. You're gonna say this. You're gonna stand for this. You're mm-hmm. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna actually do that for that person. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh, there's no way I would. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's one of the places we ended as we talked about re- receiving, imitating, being an example. Yeah, is is this idea? And you wrote this beautifully in your draft, and I absolutely stole it at uh, at Central. Like, it's more than just a. Uh, an intellectual assent to a set of an a set of ideas. Yeah, like Jesus says, "Love your enemies." Oh, I agree with that. Yeah, the distinctiveness is I'm actually going to do that. Bingo. Bingo. As hard and messy as that yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. That that imitating Jesus and being an example for others, living distinctively means I can't just agree with that idea. Exactly. I, I've got to do it, and I need people around me to help me figure out how to do that. Absolutely. And, and it starts with receiving. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about that. Like, like you have to even, you have to be, even be open to the idea yeah. that God is good, he loves you, he knows you, and Jesus died mm-hmm. for you. And there, and, and, you got to start there. And Paul, <laughs> Paul gives that that very clearly. Like yeah. that, that's the thing that's spreading is how they turned away from idols. Yes. And we talked about how important it is to know what you're turning toward. Yeah, they didn't turn from idols to just a different idol. Right. They turned to the true and living God, and we talked about that with re- with repentance, like changing your mind, going Absolutely. a different direction. That's that receiving piece. Absolutely. But then we imitate Jesus, become like our our big brother Jesus. Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, one of the phrases Pastor Wes always uses. Um, uh, is uh, this Jesus stuff really works? Like, it, believe it, it or not, like, yeah. believe it or not, like, yeah. like wow, when I forgive someone who's harmed me, yeah. I feel better. Yeah, and I be- I take another step of becoming more like Jesus. This this following Jesus thing really does work. Yes, and and and, and I'll say this too. There's a for some of us. I was trying to think like, what's the most common place for a lot of us? Mm-hmm. And my hunch would be. If, you, if we had to just do like literally by numbers, mm-hmm. my hunch would be the majority of us listening, the majority of us that were in there listening to the sermon, engaging mm-hmm. it, are probably somewhere in that in between like the imitating and example piece. Mm-hmm. And so here's what I would say. I know just from lunches we have with mm-hmm. people and conversations mm-hmm. we have, a lot of people have hit a wall mm-hmm. to where maybe – they're kind of stuck with that being an example thing because they're mm-hmm. not quite sure. They're trying to figure mm-hmm. it out for themselves. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there is a beauty in just imitating it to get to the point where you you can actually kind of walk through it and believe it yourself. Mm-hmm. So I just, you know, I've had conversations with people recently about like they're so angry at someone mm-hmm. or they have an enemy or, or someone's made themselves an enemy in their life. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm so angry for them. I'm so angry for them. I'm so angry for them. So I just encourage them, like, well, look, just try praying for them. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I can't do some five-minute flowery prayer. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, can you do, like, a two-sentence prayer? Mm-hmm. And they're like, maybe. And I'm like, well, yeah. start there. Yeah. Start with just literally praying for your enemy. Yeah. And then over time, what or, I've seen or, God or, do... Or even that God would just give you the desire to forgive. Right, them. exactly, I don't want yeah. to, I'm yeah. mad, I'm exactly. spitting mad. God, exactly. God, help me to even have the desire. Yes, yes. That's imitating. Yes, and, and when, we, when we do that long enough, guess mm-hmm. what happens? We begin to, our heart softens, mm-hmm. and we begin to have this transformation where, where not only are we, we agree with it, we're imitating it, but then all of a sudden, like, it's happened for us. Right. And now we're like, this is, we're becoming the example for others. Yeah. Like now we've, we've been able to forgive our enemy and guess what? We're now ministering to our enemy mm-hmm. because they're like, what changed with you? What happened mm-hmm. with you? And you get to say, well, guess what? Jesus transformed my life. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's like, like that's, that's stuff. the piece of it. That's, that's the, why the movement is so beautiful in that text of receiving, yeah. imitating, and then being the example. Yeah. And th- th- this is just such great stuff. I'm so excited about the rest of the yeah. series. Like, yeah. I-, I had somebody come up to me at 
uh, central. And it, it was somebody that was caught in that in between, yeah. uh, imitate an example. And he said, I almost didn't come this morning. I just, I wasn't feeling it. And he's yeah. like, Dan, that was for me. And like CJ, when we were in the worship yeah. set, something about, said something about just becoming so familiar and we get overly comfortable with yes. where we're at in our faith. Like, yeah. what's that next step? And the, yeah. the, this person came up to me and was like, dang, yeah. <laughs> like I needed that. I'm like, well, buckle up. Cause exactly. that was just, that was number one. Uh, so we're just walking chapter by chapter. It was yes. five chapters to yep. first Thessalonians. Yep. Um, so we gave some homework at all three we campuses. Did. We did. Uh, number one is just to read yeah. the entire book of first Thessalonians. It's five chapters. Yeah. It won't take you very long. I joked, I joked with them at the Cape. I said, you can read a chapter a day and be done by next Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like it's, yeah, it's that we, quick. We want to hear from you on yeah. Sunday. Like, yeah. hey, I did this. Come up and tell us that, yeah. that you did it. The, the the other homework that I don't think we said during the sermons. No, no, uh, I'm excited we'll, about this we'll one. Throw out, we're going to put in the show notes uh, a link to a video from the Bible Project. Yes. Yeah. And, and if, you've, if you're not familiar with Bible Project, let this be an entrance yes. to it. Their stuff is so good. Here's what's crazy. This week, on Sunday and on Monday, two people talked to me, two completely different like things they were mm-hmm. asking for. And both of their requests led me to recommending Bible Project yeah. to them. No, it's just like it's, it, it's such a good stuff. resource. Um, and then this video is a great. It's a seven minute flyover of kind of like what First Thessalonians is all mm-hmm. about, and it gives you so much context, so much info. Mm-hmm. You're going to be sitting the, here next Sunday, going like, "Yeah, I see this with the total. I see this yeah. with even a greater understanding now." Yeah, well, so, it'll be in the show notes. So please take seven minutes yeah. out of your day and. Uh, watch that. And yeah. There won't be a test or a quiz or anything, but that'd but, be awesome. But we quiz people. <laughs> <laughs> we both have teacher wives now, yep. so we, we think that way. Uh, <laughs> my seminary students are listening, going, "No, no tests. Pop quiz. Get pop, out your pop, pencils. Pop, pop quiz." <laughs> so, uh, and this has been good. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, hope you're all having a great week and hope this has been helpful. Hope you're excited for the rest of this, uh, this series. Uh, and, uh, we'll be back uh, next week. Uh, pastor Wes is going to be here with pastor Sherry talking Sweet. about, awesome. talking about, uh, part two of this message series. So we hope that you'll uh, tune in for that. Have a great awesome. rest of your week. God bless you. Bye. Bye.